Well, before I start the conversation, I need to do a uh, disclaimer. I'm not promoting the use of steroids. I'm not encouraging any of you to use steroids. Steroids are dangerous. They're illegal. Don't want to don't want to come across like I'm trying to get you guys on steroids. But some of you are using steroids anyway, and a lot of you are going to use them, whether people tell you to or not, knowing all the risk and, and all that stuff. So uh, there's a phrase that a lot of guys of my generation, guys who came up in the 80s, 90s, I'm 52. I'm pretty damn old. We, uh, we said steroids were the finishing touch back then. And a lot of the pros from back then still say that. And it's, uh, it's kind of controversial because a lot of the modern bodybuilders, a lot of the young guys now think that that's just hypocrisy. That's a bunch of bullshit. They use plenty of drugs and they're trying to downplay it and uh, downplay how much the steroids helped them, how big a role that they played in the physiques that these people built and won all these contests with. And <clears throat> I'll say right up front, none of those bodies that you see from the 80s, 90s, whatever, you can go back even further than that, obviously, would be capable of having that look without steroids. That is a look that is chemically enhanced. It is not possible without the use of pharmaceuticals. It's just not. There are great natural bodybuilders, but the look that we have come to associate with pro bodybuilding for a very long time now is chemically enhanced, is chemically assisted. So... When someone comes out and comes from that era and tries to say, we didn't rely on steroids. Steroids were just the, the finishing touch. They were like the last consideration on top of the training and the nutrition. They played a very small role. In a sense, they're right. In a sense, they're wrong. I, I, I do want to stress again that, yes, steroids were used. They have always been used, or at least for a good 50 years now. And they do make a huge, huge difference in the way a physique looks. However, when I say that steroids should be the finishing touch, what I mean by that is you shouldn't put so much of your attention and emphasis on the drugs you're taking and what drugs you're going to take and trying to find the optimal combination of drugs and ratio of this drug to that drug and timing and dosage and all that. Because I see a lot of guys now that that's the main thing that they talk about, think about, that's their primary concern is the drug aspect of it when they're not training that hard. They're not training optimally. They're not doing exercises that work best for them. They're not working in the right rep range for hypertrophy. Their form is terrible. When it comes to nutrition, they're relying a lot on shakes and bars. They're eating a lot of processed foods, a lot of fast foods. They're not meal prepping. They're not eating a lot of wholesome, nutritious, fresh food. Fresh chicken breasts, fresh fish, eggs, fruit, vegetables, things like that. They're relying on a lot of things like bars and shakes. Um, it, it's really, it's come to my attention more so even uh, in the past year or so because I get people messaging me, asking me about what's a good cycle. Here's the cycle I'm on. What should I do differently? Uh, I vividly recall over last summer, summer of 2021, you know, so we're still in 2021, a, a guy who was preparing for a show and he had a coach. And I won't say the coach's name. You all know who he is. He's a very popular YouTuber himself. But he had a coach, but he kept coming to me asking, you know, should I, how much Anivar, how much Winsterol? He was very, very concerned about the drugs he was taking and should he be taking different drugs or different amounts? And I clicked on his profile, clicked on his Instagram page, and I'm like, saw his progress pics. And I'm, I told him straight up, you're fat, you're, you're, there's no way your diet is on point or you, you started this diet from a very, very fat uh, body fat composition, too much body fat. And now you're looking for some shortcuts. You're looking for a holy grail. You're looking for drugs to save the day. You know, he's asking about clenbuterol and thyroid drugs and all that. But I said, you got too fat. You're, you're, you were obese. And now you want to be on a bodybuilding stage. Long story short, you know, I told him, you know, you have a coach. Listen to your coach. He competed. He was not in any kind of shape. Big surprise. You know, I know what the body can do. Even average genetics, you can only lose so much fat in a certain amount of time. It's just, you can't go from, you know, can't see a damn cut in sight to shred it out of your mind in 12 or 16 weeks. It's just most people, bodies, it's impossible. I don't care what drugs you feed them. Anyway, uh, another case, uh, just the other day, a guy messaged me. He's asking about GH. He's asking about peptides and SARMs. He's very, very concerned about all that, uh, which ones to use and all that. And again, I always click on the picture. What does this guy look like? 
barely looks like he works out. And I'm thinking, steroid should be the finishing touch. You should really learn how to train correctly for you, how to eat correctly, build a really good base of muscular size, strength, get a really good handle on all of that. Then when you add steroids on to the equation, into the equation, boom, magic. Uh, you know, genetics aside, obviously the people with great genetics are always gonna have the best physiques, all other factors uh, notwithstanding. So when I say drugs should be the finishing touch, what I really mean is don't look to them as your primary concern. Uh, I see kids haven't even started training yet and they're asking about drugs. I'm like, my God, go to the gym, lifts, figure out how to train, figure out how to stimulate your muscles, get some muscle on you. You can build some muscle naturally. You can, I promise you. Millions of people have done it before you. It can be done. I did it. Tons of people I know did it. We built a, a solid natural foundation. And then a lot of these people I know went on drugs and then boom, their physiques took off to a whole other level after that. But I've known a lot of other people who started with the drugs, relied on them, never really knew how to train or they were kind of lazy about the training because they didn't think the training mattered that much. Certainly weren't eating right. Those people, they would make some kind of gains, but they were never the ones who were spectacular in the end. They were the ones who usually quit or they quit for long stretches of time. They'd only come back to training when they were on drugs. And then you wouldn't see them. They, when they were off drugs, you wouldn't see these people. They would just fall off the face of the earth. Um, all right, I hope I'm making some kind of sense. I know I'm really all over the place with this, as usual. So since we're live, what I like to do is go to the, uh, go to the phones, as they used to say in the old days. So Arturo Avalos. <laughs> so I said steroids are the finishing touch. And the first question is a how to use steroids question. Arturo Avalos. Hello, Aaron. Quick question. Can I load test EQ and DEC in the same syringe? Yes, you can. Yeah. There's, uh, there are no issues as far as I know, and I've been around a while, with loading different types of steroids in the same syringe. In fact, it's highly recommended if you get one of these super high concentrated testosterones, like a T400, where it's 400 uh, milligrams of testosterone in just one milliliter of oil, there's gonna be so much benzoate alcohol in there that a shot of that is gonna be uh, a day, two, sometimes it'll last you a good week or more. You're gonna be in excruciating agony. Uh, a good way to try to minimize that is to have something else in the syringe with that, uh, an ML of DECA or Equipoise, something like that. Seems to help a lot, but yes, you can do that. Zolt, because yeah, I've had heart attack. My doctor prescribed 40 milligrams ros rosuvastatin per day. Will this hurt my gains? No, the, I'm on a statin. I'm on a torvastatin. I'm on 10 milligrams. It's a, it's a generic Lipitor. And um, it doesn't hurt your gains if you're on a higher dose than that. I'm, I'm going to assume, and I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Please don't quote me on this. I'm assuming 40 milligrams of that uh, statin is uh, equivalent or very close to what I'm using. I know that at the higher doses, you're at a lot more, at a higher risk of muscle tears, muscle injuries. It does seem to, uh, and I have heard people say muscle weakness, but I'm on 10 milligrams. I've had no issues. And so far, cardiologist has seen no reason to bump up my uh, my dose. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> uh, J-Dog, haha, <laughs> I knew a guy in my town. You could always tell he had gotten a cycle because he was in the gym training, never seen him till then. Yeah, I noticed it. Uh, I was at a gym in California, Pasadena, California for about nine years. It, it started out as a world gym, and then it became a gold gym, and unfortunately now it's gone. It was a great gym. But there were certain people that I would see come back to the gym when they were starting to look good again because they had just started using steroids. I don't know where if they were training somewhere else or at home. They'd get big and jacked. Then... Um, They'd, they'd leave. They'd probably go off steroids. And I wouldn't see these people again for sometimes months. And a lot of times they'd come back. It looked like they never trained. That touched a weight in their lives. If, you know, rely is a very, very tricky word here. Are you relying on the steroids? Do you need the steroids? You know, you could say, well, Ryan, you're, you're a big hypocrite. You're on steroids. You, you rely on them. Well, I'm on, I'm always on steroids. This is true. I'm on my own TRT plus. It's a higher dose than anybody would consider legitimate TRT. For, that, this is what makes me look and feel the way I want to look and feel. And fortunately, uh, my health is good. My blood work looks good. I'm getting some more done soon. My echocardiograms, my calcium score, all that. I'm very fortunate. Uh, 
my family seems to be very, very resilient to drugs. Anyway, um, what the hell was the question? Uh, let's go. What are my thoughts on Northern Pharma? I don't know what that brand is. I'm sorry. I don't keep up with the underground labs. There was a time years ago when I did because I was buying a... I was buying them uh, from dealers and I wanted to know, uh, I never heard of this, I've heard of that. That's got a good reputation. This one, I don't know, or this one's got a bad reputation, but I don't keep up with that anymore, I'm sorry. Jay Swole, you're in your hole. I use YK11 and Lodos TRY, I think you meant TRT, and have great results. So TRT is testosterone replacement therapy. What you should say there, and I'm correcting you, so please forgive me, you should say Lodos test not TRT. TRT and testosterone are not the same word. They're not, they don't have the same meaning. TRT means testosterone replacement therapy. And it's a medical term for people that are prescribed testosterone because their bodies don't make enough of it anymore, or they never, they never did in the first place. Um, okay. So I'm sorry. So Jay swollen your hole. I use YK11, which I assume is a peptide. I don't even know what that is. I'm sorry. Low dose TRY. I don't know if you were trying to say trend or test there or TRT and I have great results and 40 feel awesome and growing and getting lean. Is this a good cycle? I can't. Oh no. Now you, you corrected it. You said TRT. Well, what's YK11? What is that? I don't know. Is that a, is that a peptide? I have no idea what that is. You gotta, you gotta help me out here. I'm, I'm slow. Uh, 50 mil tests from doc. That's pretty low. Uh, four times a month. Yeah, you know, low-dose testosterone is, that's what you're going to be prescribed medically uh, if your body doesn't produce sufficient quantities of it, which in my case, I abused steroids for years and I destroyed my body's own ability to produce testosterone in sufficient quantities. That probably would have happened to me eventually. Uh, it happened to me in my late 30s. It probably would have happened to me like right around now, my, my early 50s eventually my testosterone production. And there are people out there who do continue to produce adequate testosterone into their 50s and even 60s. There are outliers, as we call them, outliers. Just like there are people who can smoke cigarettes every day and never get lung cancer. They could do that. They could smoke for 30 years and never get lung cancer. However, should you do that? Probably not, because for every person that smokes two packs of cigarettes a day and doesn't get lung cancer, there are a whole lot of people that do get lung cancer. We could say the same thing about alcohol. Um, let's go back. Um, John Martin, hey, I'm 40 years old, currently on 150 milligrams of testosterone and nanthate per week and daily 40 milligrams of anabar. Will my testicles go back to normal and PCT what to use? Um, if you care about your balls, your testicles being big and full, I could, I could care less about mine, but, uh, HCG, I don't know the doses. I'm sorry. That's, this is why we have, I have Dr. T every Tuesday. We do a show. But HCG is specifically to get that production back of your own testosterone. But a lot of guys specifically use it to fill out their testicles again because, yes, testosterone use, steroid use will make your testicles shrink. And apparently that bothers some people. j Dog, thanks to you and Dr. O'Connor for correcting people on TRT versus low abuse. Yep. j Swole on your whole myostatin inhibitor. It's a steroid song. I'm not aware that any of these alleged myostatin inhibitors actually do that. I don't think that they do. I don't think we're there yet, technically, pharmaceutically. Uh, I don't think we have actual myostatin inhibitors. If we did, people would be blowing up with muscles like freaks, like those those Belgian blue bulls or like those uh, that whippet dog. You ever see that, that dog that looks like a cartoon character? So I don't, personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with that. Even if somebody gave it for free, I wouldn't use it. Why so many men with no Adam's apple nowadays? That's a good question. I wasn't aware that were that that was a problem, but what, that's that is pretty creepy. Michaelis Hakusis, hey Ron, your opinion first cycle. Gotta go back. Uh, where would you go? Opinion on first cycle: five hundred milligrams test, fifty milligrams Winstrol, and then fifty milligrams Winstrol. I think you you wrote that twice for twenty weeks. Um, twenty weeks is a long cycle. Um, it's not a bad cycle, but what are you doing? 50 milligrams of Winstrol per day? If that's an oral, uh, I wouldn't want to see anybody on 50 on an oral for fifth, for 20 weeks in a row. If it's an injectable, are you doing 50 milligrams a day or am I doing a, a 50 milligrams of Winstrol or any oral steroid for 
20 weeks, it's very, very risky for your liver. Uh, I'd rather see you do all injectables if you're going to be on something for 20 weeks. It They avoid that, that first pass through the liver. So, yeah, tr I'll tell you what, for your first cycle, you can't go wrong with just the basics, the basics. Test and DECA, test and equipoise, but test and DECA is like the classic. That's like uh, macaroni and cheese or uh, peanut butter and jelly. They just go together so, so well. So something like 500 milligram, milligrams of test and 300 milligrams of DECA for first cycle, 20 weeks, you would see some really, really significant gains, I'm sure. IFBB Pro Natalia Coelho, currently in Brazil, I believe, aren't you, Natalia? Bom dia. It's all the, it's all the Portuguese I know, damn it. Uh, Ron, always bring hot topics, taking the time to give good advice. Thank you. Appreciate you, Natalia. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Natalia's got uh, a video up on her Instagram and her uh, Facebook doing some leg extensions. She just, just won a couple shows post-Olympia, and uh, she's still shredded. Shredded out of her mind. Then again, every time I've ever seen Natalia, she's shredded. I don't think I've ever seen her with more than... Five or six percent body fat ever. She stays very, very lean. Uh, Anthony Andrews, hi from UK. UK, good place. Went there once. Uh, Hector Mendoza, Ron, can I still take pro hormone? Hector, you joker. Steve is just asking if you're going to nationals. Uh, I guess he's going to be calling you. Uh, are you going to nationals? I, I'm not. Uh, yes, you can still take pro hormones, Hector. You silly rabbit. No. Pro hormones are. Pro hormones are just, they're just steroids that haven't been classified yet. So just take, if you're going to take pro hormones, and I don't want to sound like I'm encouraging people to take steroids, but if you're going to take pro hormones anyway, just take steroids for God's sake. At least you know exactly what they are, what they do. Uh, there's a track record with them, whereas pro hormones, who the hell knows, man, what they are. Uh, imagine being a man and not caring about your balls. Well, when I say I don't care about my balls, I mean... <laughs> I don't care how they look. I don't care if they're big or small. I'm, you know, first of all, I'm married. I tell you, my wife could care less if my balls are raisins or, or plums. She doesn't care. They have no function during the sexual act. Why do you, you can care about the aesthetic look of them, but I personally don't. It's a, you know, we all care about what we care about. And you're not right or wrong and neither am I. <laughs> J-Dog, genetics is the myostatin inhibitor. Yeah, ain't that the truth? Yeah, uh, we have. There have been people who have found to be myostatin deficient, and they grow muscle out of control once they start training. Um, I think Flex Wheeler was found to be myostatin deficient in an actual. I don't know if they te they tested the blood or work, I don't know what kind of test they they performed to determine that. But there are people out there who are myostatin. I've heard another another uh, hormone is folostatin. So if you're deficient in both of those hormones. Uh, I think he'd be big and muscular without even touching a weight. Like there was a, he wouldn't be a baby now. He'd be like a teenager now. There was, there was a baby in Germany years ago, Germany, who was myostatin deficient. And they showed pictures of his legs and they were jacked. He had these big bulbous calves and he was like a toddler. And they, I, I recall reading when he was like two years old, he picked up the sofa, like a, like a sofa and flipped it over. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, that's a genetic freak right there for sure. Justin. Adamchik, 750 milligrams of test cypionate per a.m., so every morning, I guess, and one ml of propionate every other day is overkill. Yeah, I mean, I don't see any... If you're going to use tests, just pick one, stick with it. Propionate is fast-acting, but it's it clears your system fast. You need to do it every other day. Um, if you're using something else, like cypionate the most popular ester. Tons of people use cypionate, and anthate's popular too, but... They do take a week to 10 days to really start kicking in, but once they're in your bloodstream, they have long half-lives, so you can inject. Uh, I, I'm, I agree with the doctors, Dr. O'Connor and Dr. Tuliados. To keep a more stable blood level of the tests, you don't want to inject just once a week, like twice a week. So like a Monday and a Thursday or a Sunday and a Wednesday, something like that. Just break it up into two, two shots. Um, but yeah, uh, not too many people out there need so if it's, I don't know how much that would be. 750 of SIP a week, that's 750. And if they're doing one ml of propionate, propionate usually comes uh, in 100 milliliter, 100 milligram per milli concentration. So you'd be doing three and a half of those a week. Yeah, that's over a gram of test a week. I don't think too many people need that much test. Obviously big bodybuilder dudes, 
want to compete and stuff, yeah. But the average person, that that is overkill. Samson 2321. Adam's apple is just a protruding voice box. It's not one styroid, which is low down in the neck. Yeah, I don't know what the, the lack of... Uh, I don't even know what you guys are talking about when you say there's, there's lack of Adam's apples anymore. I mean, what does that mean? The guys are getting more feminine? Unfortunately, men are becoming more feminine. It's because of all the crap, all the, all the chemicals in the environment and in all the foods and products and everything in our households. They're killing uh, the testosterone levels of young men. These young men have terrible sperm counts, sperm motility. They're having erectile dysfunction in their t early 20s. It's, it's disgusting to see what what's happening. And it's all because of pollution and these things that we're putting in all uh, these chemicals that we have all around us. Per week. Uh, Justin was clarifying something. Uh, oh, per week. Yeah, I figured you weren't doing 750 milligrams of, of test sip every day. Spell check. Is it overkill? Yeah. I get, unless you're like a big 250 pound plus guy or you've been doing steroids for a very long time. I don't think anybody that that's a lot of testosterone. I, I don't think anybody except, you know, a high level competitor, someone who's trying to be like a big freak needs more than five or 600 milligrams of test a week. Max that that's, that's if it's dosed properly, if it's actually five or 600, that's plenty for most people. You know, unless you've been using steroids for 20 years, and then um, it's like uh, lyrics to one of my favorite songs, Mr. Brownstone by Guns N' Roses. I used to do a little, but the little wouldn't do it, so the little got more and more. Just keep trying to get a little better, said a little better than before. So yeah, when, when you've been on steroids for a very long time, unfortunately, you do tend to need more, higher doses to respond to it, unfortunately. It's just like, you know, anybody who's a, a weed smoker out there, I'm sure there's a few of you out there. Maybe the first time you smoked pot, one puff was like you were, you were stoned out of your skull. 20 years later, if you've been smoking every day, I'm sure one puff doesn't do jack for you anymore. Probably takes a full joint or, you know, many, many hits on a bong or something. It's just tolerance that we build up to any kind of drug. Um, here we go again. James, do you think 500 milligrams test plus 10 to 20 milligrams D-ball is a good first cycle? Uh, it's kind of, I don't want to tell you to take high doses of D-ball, but 10 to 20 is a little on the low side. Stay, go with 30 and I wouldn't stay on the D-ball for more than four weeks, like 30 days with any kind of oral steroid. You don't want to be on them very long. They do start really impacting your liver because these things have to, you, you take these pills, they do have to go through your liver and there is damage done. Uh, so yeah, Gus Pulos from Gus Pulos. Number one question asker on Ask Dr. Testosterone. I've been on 20 milligrams a day of Halo tested, and I've increased all my lifts by 50%. Good Lord. My bench went from 225 to 501, or 500 for one rep max in four weeks. <laughs> that is outrageous. That is an outrageous increase of strength. I don't think I've ever heard... I'm not calling you a liar, Gus, but guys, do you, do you buy that? Gus says he went from four weeks... Benching 225 for one rep to 500 pounds from 20 milligrams a day of halo testing, which is not a high dose. Most people would be with, do, using 40 or 50 milligrams. That's crazy, Gus. It's so crazy, I don't even believe you. But if it's true, that is insane. I guess strange things happen. Hector, yeah, call Steve back. Steve was going to call you. Maybe he just called you. D. Shore, can you get an interview with Kevin Horton? Be good to see what he thinks of physiques of yesterday and now. Um... He's a great, I, I would love to interview him. I just don't know how many people would watch it, to be honest with you. Like I had Per Bernal on um, a couple weeks ago and it didn't get many views. And Per is like one of the greatest physique photographers of all time. He had a great story to tell, but you know, uh, I tend to get more views and I do have to, getting more views is kind of like my job as the online editor. That's part of my responsibility is views, views, views. I have to go with big names, athletes, I do steer away from the controversy and that hurts me. That really hurts me because people, <clears throat> people love controversy and shit talking and drama and um, tragedy. Yeah, I do report on deaths and stuff, but I stay away from the arrests, the feuds. Uh, you know, other people do it so well, like Nick Tregilli. He's probably the king of it right now. Um, Nick Strength and Power, he reports the news like that too. There's, there's, there are other places to go. I don't even know what the hell I was talking about. Tell you retracted her message. 
heard that about Flex, yeah. Mohamud, big Robbie looks great in last guest posing India. Yes, yes. He's two time Mr. Olympia. He's awesome. No, no, no question there. Cool boy, pros on versus off shows they are not the finishing touch. Yeah, I didn't say that the steroids don't make you much bigger. I didn't, I'm not trying to say that they're that they play only a tiny role in the physiques. They do play a big role, but a lot of times when the pros go off juice permanently, they stop eating all that food. They stop training that way. They're not trying to be big anymore. They're not. They did it for years and years, and they've been there, done that. They're like Dorian. Dorian is like one-third the size that he used to be. He's so much smaller. He doesn't care. He's living his best life. You know, he's hiking mountains. He's traveling the world. He's doing all kinds of things. He doesn't care that he's not 300 pounds. He's, he's way past that. So, yeah. Jay, swollen your hole. Working out for five years. I'm 40, 50 mil test a week. That's a very low dose. 10 mil YK11 for 12 weeks. And I gained 30 pounds and got lean. I don't know what happened. I'm trying. Okay, well. Maybe maybe we finally do have a myostatin inhibitor that works. I don't know. That sounds pretty damn great to me. I don't know. Steroid the foundation for a pro career? No. Pro foundation for a pro career is genetics. You could give somebody with average genetics or poor genetics all the drugs in the world. They're never going to be a pro. Never. And if they somehow manage to get a pro card, they're never going to do jack shit as a pro. You have to have great genetics first and foremost. Have to. Then... Got to train, got to eat, throw the drugs in, and boom, you have these specimens that we that we all freak out over. Uh -huh. Well, that was your first time trying anything ever? Yeah, Jay Swole in your hole. First cycles are always the best, always. The virgin cycle, we call it. You popped your cherry. You're never going to, you know, typically you don't ever see results quite like that again, unfortunately. But, you know, it's like they say chasing the dragon. It was a heroin, right? Anytime the first time someone does heroin, it's this magical, blissful, euphoric feeling, and it's they're always chasing that again. It's never quite that good again. Only the first time. Yeah, I love comparing steroids to recreational drugs. It's it's, it's interesting. Who do we think is the best commentator for the Olympia? Moa Mahmoud, Fuad Abiyad, of course. Who else? Dennis James and Fuad. I think. Or are they doing the Arnold? They're doing the Arnold, right? Yeah, I don't know who the best commentator for the Olympia is. I don't even want to get into all that because then you're going to start it on Sean. Uh, yeah, I know Kevin Horton. GNR, yes. Jay Swole, your home. My blood work was okay. Came back, uh, came right back. My test level was at the beginning of the cycle was 1050. Oh, so you had, wait a minute. You had test levels of 1050 as you, before you started your first cycle. That's, that's a very high natural testosterone level. Especially, what'd you say, you're 40 years old? Yeah, yeah, dude, that's pretty good. Stay away from steroids, my friend. Yeah, Moha Mahmoud says that. Yeah, you know, if you want to be healthy, you want to live a long life, be healthy, stay away from steroids, 100%. Totally agree with that. They're risky. No matter who you are, they're going to be risky. They're going to, they're probably going to take some years off your life, especially the more you do of them. And, you know, genetics play a big role. Some people will respond much worse health-wise, to steroids. The, they're very unlucky. And you don't know where you're going to fall into that until you use them and find out. And you might find out the hard way that your body doesn't uh, doesn't, doesn't handle steroids very well. Da, 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 held for you. I'm concerned for Nick Walker. If you wanted more views, bring Lee Priest. No. I, I, I've explained why Lee is... Uh, Lee says whatever he wants. He doesn't care who he offends. He doesn't worry about... Uh, slander or he'll just say any crazy things and this guy sucked that one you know he'll, he doesn't care and I, I can't have that i just can't ron if you could turn back time <laughs> sorry what would you have done different in terms of diet workout and ped that's a whole other that's a whole other video that that's a good idea thank you anthony that that's a really good idea because uh uh that's something i could talk about substantially go over all the things i would do differently and there are, there are quite a few, believe me, quite a few, because I was a dumbass. We didn't have an internet back then. I didn't have a mentor. It was a lot of trial and error and, you know, reading and experimenting. Jay Dog, I really enjoyed the pair interview. Yeah, Pear's a cool dude, man. I, I, I wish more people would watch that interview. He had a really cool story to tell about how he got into, the, got into photography, into the sport and all that. It's actually really interesting. 
Uh, Kevin will have a lot of stores. Yeah. Titino Miller, 50% increase in... Okay, now we're talking about Gus Poulos' bench press. We have a non-believer here. Titino Miller, 50% increase in four weeks for 225. It would be like 335. So I think he got his math wrong. Like, I'm pretty bad at math. I think what he meant to say was that would be a uh, 200%. <laughs> I'm still bad. 200% increase? Yeah. Well, I mean, he knew that he knew what he was benching. He knew what he was trying to say. I, I just think the percentages might have been off, but he knew he went from 225, two plates, to 500, which would be five plates and a two and a half. That's a lot, man. Let's see. Who is close to the title potential? Reagan or Nick or Hottie or Hunter? Well, Hottie's been uh, third place. So Hottie's, and they never, none of those other people have. So Hottie's closer to winning the Mr. Olympia than, than Hunter or Nick or who else did you say? Hunter, yeah. Ron, do you think very dark athletes skim? Skim? What do you mean? Oh, wait, there's more. Oh, <laughs> you, okay. Do you think very dark athletes like Akim and Sarah should use some light makeup cream type thing to show their lines more? White athletes darken up, it seems logical. Uh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, because you can be, obviously, we know we can be too light. If you're too light, that's bad. Too dark's not really good either, but I never thought about that. I don't think anyone's ever, that's a very original idea you had, sir. I've never heard anyone even make that suggestion before or even mention it. Good question. Food for thought. Food for thought. I don't know how that would work. Spray them with like lighter color. I don't know. Uh, Jay Swollen Hole. Did I, I think I almost just made you a moderator. It has been an honor. Thank you for taking your time. You're welcome. You're a lifetime subscriber. Awesome. Moha Mahmood. Phil Heath is the best for commenting with Kai Green and DJ and Lee Priest and Sean Ray in press conference. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I've never heard Phil comment, uh, do any commentating. I don't know how good he is. Obviously, he'd be very knowledgeable. I just, I don't know how good he, he would be. Maybe he'd be great. Just a madam chick. A dumb chick. Yeah. Do you think you can get into serious bodybuilding conditioning, obviously using steroids in your 40s? Or does age play against you regardless? Oh, uh, tons of, I mean, geez. Google Masters Nationals, Masters USA, uh, North American Masters, Universe Masters. There's tons of guys in their 40s and 50s who look incredible. Yeah, it's a, it's not like, you know, gymnastics where you need to be a very young person to be at your peak. Um, yeah, there's plenty of guys looking looking incredible in their 40s and 50s these days. Tons. I mean, I'm 52. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of drama recently. It's tiresome. Uh, I get it. There's a place for it. It's just not my thing. Uh, Jay Swanehall, it was, it was my first cycle. The first cycle of my first test levels were that high. Oh, you have a 545 natural. Okay. You answer that every live show. I get a lot of the same questions every show, Jay. Don't you notice? What do I think of Mack Truck? Don't know much about him at all. Sorry. Having an OnlyFans? Uh, I, okay. I I know it's, uh, you know, shouldn't judge people. Judge not lest you be judged. People in glass houses and all that. But uh, having an OnlyFans account, I guess we're talking about men having one, uh, I assume. Tons of women have them, obviously. They're selling naked pictures and videos and sex videos of themselves. And, you know, it's all going to come back. That stuff's forever. OnlyFans owns that content. You don't own that content. So five, ten years from now, it could, they could sell it to somebody else. And here's your, here's you with your uh, heart on in front of the world. You know, if you're cool with that, uh, having an OnlyFans, I'm really not, sh I'm not sure what you're asking about it, but just be careful what you put out there on the internet, guys, because it's anything you think is uh, fleeting. Somebody can screenshot it, grab the video. It's forever. It's forever. And things can come back to haunt you later on in life. You might not think that you care about it now, but, you know, years from now, you might be working for some Fortune 500 company. You might be uh, chairman of the local uh, PTO or something. I don't know. <laughs> That'd be ridiculous. Devin Herring, if you've been cycling back and forth on 500 milligrams to 250 test C every 12 weeks or so per year, do you think... If you go to 125, 250 milligrams, can you keep all your gains? Um, I don't think you'd keep all of them, but as long as you keep training hard, get enough rest, keep eating very well, I'm sure you can keep most of them. The, you know, you can't really keep all your gains that you make on a higher dose when you switch to a lower dose. 
If so, then, you know, steroids would be kind of, uh, wouldn't even need steroids. But yeah, like most people cannot maintain the gains, the size that they have on, say, a gram of steroids a week on half a gram. They'll keep most of them, but it won't be quite as much. Uh, let's see. Oh, boy. I had chills watching the 99 Olympia with Aceto and Romano. I have no issue with current guys, but the physiques back then were otherworldly. Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm lucky I was around and got to go to all those shows in the 90s. There were some awesome shows back then. Uh, how many athletes, Andy Holden, how many athletes in Olympia lineup do you think use synthol or something like it? Have you ever tried? I never used synthol. I should have. Uh, when I say should have, I mean... Everyone in the world knows my, my arms, especially my triceps, they're horrible, horrible. So if anyone ever had a valid, valid reason, and I did every, I've tried every type of training. I've been training for 38 years, but I just did not. To me, that's an implant. It's, I know for me to say the word cheating as a steroid user sounds ridiculous, but with steroids, at least you have to work. You still have to train, eat, rest. You still have to do all that injecting something into a muscle that stays there and swells the muscle up, to me, that's an implant. It's like getting pec implants or, or calf implants. You didn't build those pecs. You didn't build those calves. And a muscle with synthol in it that's inflated, you didn't build that muscle. That's something artificial you're looking at. It's not actual muscle tissue. It's muscle tissue with a big glob of oil down deep inside it. So I never use it. But I don't know how many people in the Olympia, if it's used very well, obviously you wouldn't even know. So who the hell knows? I mean... I've never seen like an anonymous survey where they, they talked about it. Uh, let's see. Andy, again, question. Who of all the athletes should have you've seen blown your mind with size and structure? Who have you thought didn't look like what you thought? I mean, I'm always going to go back to like uh, Ronnie Coleman, Nasser Somebody, Marcus Rule. Seeing them up close when they were at their biggest was just, it was crazy. They were so enormous. Um, the guys who weren't as big as I thought were... They tended to be like, uh, I'm going to say natural, and you're, some of you are going to say they weren't natural. Like Mike Ashley, uh, who won the Arnold Classic. Well, he won because Sean Ray got disqualified that year. Paul Jean Guillaume was another natural guy. Seeing them up close in real life, they were way smaller to me than what I thought they were based on videos and pictures. They were not huge guys. But on stage, they created the illusion because they had small joints and things like that of being much larger. Uh, Gus, Gus again. Sorry, should have been more clear. I benched 225 for 12 and taking Halo for one month. Did a 100, 500 for one rep max. Give me crazy power. Yeah, Halo works. Halo testing works. Absolutely. Titino, when I push my test over 400 a week, my estrogen skyrockets and Remax doesn't seem to work great. Right? When I'm at 200 a week, my strength is increasing, but I feel good. I want to up my test a little advice. Try a little more. If 200 is fine, try like 250. If that's fine and your estrogen doesn't go through the roof, maybe you can go to 300. You know, you gotta just, it's like diet. It's like adjusting your carbs up and down for, you know, trial and error. Funniest bodybuilder you came across? Oh, Lee Priest is pretty funny. Jose Raymond is pretty funny. Yeah. I don't know anyone that's like a riot, like a, like a stand up comedian. <laughs> SEO is fake. Steroids help with real tissue, exactly. Do you think. There is a conspiracy to keep men effeminate away from TRT. Yeah, 100%. It's not a conspiracy. Like, I don't think there's a cabal of, like, powerful people to get together and, and plan these things. But there is sort of a conspiracy to feminize men and demonize masculinity and manhood and all things traditionally male. It's toxic masculinity. So when a man wants to be more manly, quote unquote, by using testosterone, that's definitely looked down upon. Definitely. Uh, in society. What about starting age for steroids? I don't like to see anyone under 18, 21, better, in my opinion. Uh, and I want to see a natural base, someone that knows how to train. They've already built some muscle and a good amount of strength, and they have a handle on their training nutrition. Then they can add in the steroids, and then the results are going to be so much better. Doran should be on the first, on the list. Photos don't do them justice. Yeah, that's true, but you know. Dorian, uh, up close, he was pretty damn impressive. I, I was, you know, backstage at a few of the Olympias that he won, and, yeah, he was pretty damn impressive. Uh, Andy Holden, Ron, what's your hardest prep? How much fat weight did you lose first comp? First prep. Uh, 
a lot of my preps back in my natural days were hard because I didn't give myself enough time. I would only give myself like eight weeks and I would be pretty fat. I was 230 pounds naturally with a lot of body fat. And I would try to go from that to stage ready in eight weeks. I didn't get lean enough. I would lose muscle because I was crash dieting. I was doing two hours of cardio a day. Those preps were harder. Now, the preps I did more recently were, were hard. Don't get me wrong. You know, I would diet down to stride of glutes, and that's that's hard. You have to really suffer, but at least I knew what I was doing. I didn't feel like uh, lost. Zach Khan. Zach Khan is very funny. You're right. Zach Khan is hilarious. Good point. I forgot about Zach. Antoine, also a very funny guy. Yeah, yeah. They get progressively stronger with size and plateau to certain strength, but still gain more size. I have not gotten much stronger in many, many years, and I don't think I'm going to. Um, I don't train for strength. My joints are shot to shit, but I have gotten bigger. I know I've gotten bigger. Of course, the drugs have helped in that aspect, of course. I've also learned a lot of different ways to stimulate the muscle without having to go heavier and heavier because I couldn't go heavier and heavier. I had to Shoulder pain, lower back pain, knee pain, hip pain. I had to figure out what to do. Sorry, Antoine here, transplanting is funny. Uh, I guess a young Coleman was similar to Mike Ashley. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to go because why? It's time to eat. <coughs> Gotta eat. I'm hungry. And uh, I eat my five solid meals and one shake a day to stay jacked. So thank you for all your questions. We'll do this again sometime very soon, I promise you. Appreciate you guys watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Turn on your notifications. Do all that. Love y'all madly.